Hey everybody, I'm Kathy Resnicek. I'm Richard Pressler. And we're going to be looking at the first assignment in Module 3 in the Wired Networking course offered by TAPT. So the first assignment deals with Ethernet resiliency. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a big deal. So give us a quick overview of what we're going to be seeing in this assignment. Sure, I'd be happy to. So uh, since we're talking Ethernet, we're really talking about Layer 2 resiliency. Okay. Um, and essentially what we're talking about is what happens when a cable is cut or a cable fails oh. or what happens even when an entire switch fails, right? right. Um, what, what happens to your network and can you, can you forecast it, can you plan for it, mm -hmm. can you build your network in a way where that failure is, is something the network can heal from? Okay. And there's several protocols, there's several things that have uh, been designed to help a network heal from that kind of a disaster. Uh, so if you have a building attached to another building and you have just one cable attaching the two buildings, then when that cable's gone, it's gone, right? Yeah. But what if you had two cables attaching the two right. buildings? Or what if even more complicated, you had each building connected to every other building on the campus with cables, and now you could build a, a meshed topology? Oh, okay. And how would the network handle that? Right. So we're going to talk about some ways to design your network okay. to handle link failures and equipment failures. That sounds really interesting because I've got some stories about cables being cut and mm -hmm. it's the only way we could communicate and we were dead in the water. So. Yeah, I have, I have lots of rats that seem to enjoy fiber optic <laughs> cladding to make their nest and so they've dug into the fiber optic cables yeah. to make up their nests. And yeah, you, you, you basically have to assume that there's always going to be some kind of a failure that could occur on the network. Yeah. Uh, and in this assignment specifically, we're going to talk about three ways to, to handle those different failures. Uh, the first is spanning tree protocol. Okay. So spanning tree protocol is another open standard protocol for a way for switches to negotiate with each other and determine the best path on a network and alternate paths in case the best Something path is goes. down. Oh, right? that's great. So that's yeah. good. That's very, yeah. a very good thing to do. Uh, we're also going to talk about ways to bundle uh, links together okay. and keep them all up at the same time. It's a little different from spanning tree because spanning tree will pick a link and that one will be up and the other links will be down that okay. are alternate. They stay oh, down okay. until the main one fails. Right. But when you bundle things together, and you, this can be called port channeling, there's, there's different terms for it, mm -hmm. but basically you're taking multiple links together and you're putting them into a virtual link. Hmm. So if one of them fails, the others are still online. And another advantage is, as long as they're all up, you get more bandwidth. So Sounds if you good. have two one gig links, for example, mm -hmm. you would get two gigs of bandwidth out of those two links, and you would get some added resiliency. And then the third method we're going to talk about is switch control plane resiliency. Uh, now this one's a little bit interesting because it is proprietary to each switch manufacturer, but virtually every manufacturer has come out with some way to stack their switches. Okay. And by stacking, what they're doing is they're taking and distributing the switch logic, the control plane, mm -hmm. or the programming of the switch, across multiple units so that if one unit fails, another unit can take over as the master. Um, the only real difficult part of that conversation or that, that portion of the assignment is that Cisco has their way, Juniper has their way, HP, everyone has their own protocol for doing this. Uh, there so isn't, we don't, have, there a, isn't we a don't have a winner yet. Uh, you know, we may never have a winner on this one. <laughs> okay. I, I, I've, I've researched this quite a bit. And because the control plane is designed by the programmers of that manufacturer, uh. See, we're not talking about yeah. just Ethernet. We're not right. talking. We're talking about all the program. When you go look at a switch configuration, uh -huh. it's laid out a very specific way by that manufacturer. So for them to distribute that across multiple switches is a pretty proprietary thing for them to do. Um, so we're probably not going to get a standard on that one. Okay. But it is something you should understand and know about because it's another tool for how to handle a uh, equipment failure. Great.